Ask the Podcast Coach for December 5th, 2022. Let's get ready to podcast. And there it is. It's that music that means, hey, it's Saturday morning. It's time to get your podcast questions answered live. I'm Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting. Dot com and joining me right over there is the one and all I'm because I'm I'm muting Google in the background as uh, joining me right over there from the average guy TV is the one and only Jim Coulson Jim how's it going buddy greetings Dave happy Saturday morning to be with happy Saturday morning to you great to be with you this morning there we go it's been a little slow start for me I'm not gonna lie I just yeah it's kind of that it's a cold you know I have a fall, I have a fun day. Winter. I've asked the podcast coach. Then there's a small break. We're only doing an hour today, by the way, because of this. Then I have a school of podcasting, kind of what we call office hours, and then I have to record the school of podcasting, and then I have to get ready because I'm flying to Miami tomorrow to uh, speak. So huh, I was great. all of a sudden I looked Trouble. up and I was like, I don't have enough time to uh, to do that <laughs> in one yeah, day. Well, I- I promised my kids we would, uh, this sounds funny. When you say you promised your kids, it sounds like they're seven, but you know, <laughs> my, like 27, that uh, we're doing a distillery tour today in Templeton, Iowa, which is about 90 minutes away. So wow. 1030, they're showing up here. We have a one o'clock tour and uh, spending the afternoon with them. So it'd be fun. I thought, well, we can. Then when you said, hey, we need to just go an hour, I was like, yes. Yeah, there you go. We'll, we'll jam all of our we, our thousands of topics that we have. We'll jam <laughs> them all in the next six days. Well, and, and speaking of, uh, you know, the t- distillery, thinking of, of, of drinking, uh, it's time for, of course, the, the morning coffee pour. And that pour is brought to you by our good friend Mark over at podcastbranding.co. If you are looking for artwork for your podcast, uh, I did for the School of Podcasting, for Podcast Rodeo Show, and Ask the Podcast Coach, and Mark nailed it every time. Well, that's where you want to go, podcastbranding.co. Mark is not only an award-winning uh, graphic artist, but he's also a podcaster, and he's going to take you by the hand and he wants to sit down with you one-on-one and you're just not going to get that on Fiverr so that he can make sure that your brand matches your show. And so if you need other things besides just artwork, if you need like a lead magnet or a whole website, or if you need, I don't know, um, just if you just need to hear somebody say a boot, you can get that from Mark because he's Canadian. He's a great guy, does great work. Check him out. And I'm early. I'm actually early. So I'll just say podcastbranding.co, podcastbranding.co, and uh, or go to podcastbranding.co. There it is. Coffee's always so good on Saturday mornings. Big thanks to our friend Dan Lefeb over there based on a true story podcast at based on a true story podcast.com. If you're looking for something new to listen to uh, and enjoy, Dan does a really nice job on his podcast. He'd be worth it. If you like, you know, this it's the holiday season. You might need something new to listen to. Check it out based on a true story podcast.com. Speaking of the holiday season, we only have one left in Akron, Ohio. And I went to the mall last night. I went and voted. So Tuesday, if you're in the United States, there's a vote coming up, midterm elections. Um, I went to the mall because I was somewhat near it. And then I went and got uh, one of my favorite restaurants. So I had a great Friday night. And, um, you know, on the way home, I was listening to one of my favorite shows, Podland, with uh, James Cridlin. So if you're doing the Ask the Podcast Coach drinking game, uh, it's time to drink. We mentioned James Cridlin. And uh, I was bummed because... Podland is going away. And I was like, oh, and then they explained that all they're doing is they and, and here's the cool thing. It's it is uh, listener based, this decision. And they're changing the name Podland to Pod News Weekly Review because, well, that's what it is. To me, Podland was always the extended dance version of Pod News because Pod News is a daily like three minute show. And, uh, but I was worried. They're like, yep, this is the last episode of Podland. I was like, ah, so, uh, there you go. So that was, uh, that, that they, they threw me for a fastball, but, uh, you know, it makes, it makes more sense. I mean, changing the name, sometimes, you know, your, your podcast morphs over time. What you started with is not what you have now. It doesn't make sense. It's confusing the listener. 
Dave, I think sometimes you're you're gonna maybe lose a few before you gain a few more on a name change. Like there's gonna probably be a little dip as you've confused people, just like you. You know, you were like, oh, you, you got this the wrong impression that they were stopping. No, 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 we're just doing a name change, right? And they they got cute with the this is the last version, right? Kind of thing that get that shock factor in there. Um, but you you can. I mean, I think you you'll, you'll, you should expect to maybe lose some folks in the transition unless you communicate it really, really well. And even if you do that, people, <laughs> people get easily confused. Like if we change the time for one week for this show, we confuse everybody because we're creatures of habit, right? We get used to the same thing all the time. So just, uh, just know you're going to have a couple, you probably have a couple of weeks or maybe a month or two of confusion. And then you'll get them all back. Well, he said he was at an event and somebody was talking about pod news and called it Podland, and kind of vice versa. And it was just, he's like, you know what? I'm just going to, I've got a brand pod news. I'm just going to use that. And one's long and one short, basically. <laughs> that way you don't have to, to worry about the different ones. And uh, so it just, again, proves that your podcast, it is a recipe, not a statue. I remember Lee Silverstein started off with the colon cancer podcast because you didn't have to ask, what is that show about? And then after probably about five years, he changed the title to We Have Cancer because he was saying that when you, you know, when somebody in your family has cancer, you all have cancer. And so it's, he changed the name to We Have Cancer. And I haven't really talked to him since. I know it went great. He, he actually, I think he put that to rest. And he said the reason why, I think he, he had done it for 10 years. And he said, uh, like at, at every year he would read the list of people that had been on his show that had died. And he mm. said, and he said the last time he did it, he went, yeah, I can't, it, it just punched him in the gut. And yeah. it, the other thing it also kind of reinforces is that, you know, uh, life is short. And he was like, I think it's time for me to, to do something else. And plus that show is pretty evergreen. You know, I mean, granted, there's always going to be medical um, breakthroughs or new treatments or things like that. But he, uh, I believe he put that to rest the last time I talked to him at uh, at PodFest. So you mm-hmm. you can change your name. It's your show. I've, I've seen people kind of forget in some cases that it is your show. You can do it. In fact, my last episode was uh, on the School of Podcasting was about breaking best practices. So like Patrick Keller was saying, my intro music is long, uh, but it's his show is the big seance. And so it's all right. this spooky mood setting stuff. Yeah. And where did he get his feedback from his audience? His audience said, yeah, don't, don't change that. And there were a bunch of examples of that where people had gotten feedback from their audience. And I know best practices, blah, 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 but I'm doing this anyway. And, yeah. uh, and that's what he did. Well, so no, no matter what you do, there's going to be, even if you've taken audience feedback, there's yeah. going to be somebody, some person, maybe two, who email you and you go, and they'll go contrary to everything you've heard in your feedback, right? And and so that's the I think that's the hard part of feedback is we think feedback is an automatic machine. If we just listen to it, we say that all the time. Yeah. You and I say that all the time. Listen to you know, listen to your audience. But if you just listen to it, I think you only you really get about half of what they're saying, uh, because. One, there's folks who who won't give feedback, who have opinions, and then you're going to have the contrarians, right? They just exist. They're just part <laughs> of it. Like you, you have a segment you absolutely hate. That person just loves it. Yeah. And if you take it away, they're going to remind you for the next eight weeks, why is that not there? And you're like, because I don't want to do it, you know, type of thing. <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. I'm sick of it, right? Yeah. The um, I just listened to the book by uh, Matthew Perry better known as Chandler Bing. And I'll have to go back and listen, but he said around season seven, and I think they did nine seasons. He said, can I talk like me now? Because the whole, like, can I be more? That's actually, he did like, that was the way he and his brothers talked. Like he brought that to the, to the character, the whole, like, can it be more annoying? He's like, and I'll have to go back and look in the later episodes. He's like, can I just talk normal now? Like the whole, like, we've kind of beat that to a horse. It's almost like, uh, you know, like the whole, any TV thing, right? Dynamite Urkel. And is, did I do that? He's just kind of like, all right, well, you know, can we, can we move that on? But, uh, yeah, 
that's not his real voice. Uh, sorry to <laughs> yeah. Oracle. Not not the, not, not his, his real, real voice. Not yeah. Real. And uh, uh, here's my 10 second review of that book. Holy cow. That guy, as he put it, he has the alcoholic gene and he goes, and I have it bad. And it was, it was interesting from a story standpoint, because, you know, the story arc is you start off the reluctant hero, the hero finally finds a mentor, and then they're not sure if we're going to do it. And then they do it. And then they walk off into the sunset and yay. And his was like, and, and, and it just, it was from a story standpoint, the whole time I was, the last time he had a relapse, I was like, oh, come on, seriously. So uh, that was, uh, it's an interesting book, but not, he's somewhat humorous, which how, you know, he, he had a, at one point he had a 2% chance of dying. So it's kind of hard to, uh, to joke about that, but uh, it's an interesting book from a a story standpoint. But um, again, just showing that you can change things. Uh, I remember the great debate of Bernie the cat when uh, mm. I did a survey and people were like, God, I hate your cat. You quit. That's so unprofessional. And other people were like, yeah. I love it when your cat interrupts, man. So, yeah. So no matter what you do, somebody's going to love it and somebody's not and that whole nine yards. Mm-hmm. And Jen Briney did an episode of Congressional Dish where she read that ginormous bill that went through the, I forget what it was called, but she said, look, this is really just a, a climate bill. She goes, they renamed it something. So it would kind of slide under the radar. And she just said, look, I know I'm going to take flack for this, but she's married to a guy that works in like solar energy. Um, she's very pro planet. And she's like, so like some of you are going to like laugh at me and this and that, but I'm still going to stick to what she does. And she actually gives out a PDF of the bill that's been highlighted so, man, you want to talk about credibility. She's like, no, no, this yeah. is this is what I'm talking about here. And so uh, anytime, especially with politics, the minute you say anything, your uh, half your audience is going to be like, oh, you're going to be kidding me. Well, I mean, we, we've I've surveyed my Gallup audience several times and, you know, a good chunk of them are like and even some of the internal folks that I work with believe like if you go more than 30 minutes, you get nobody like they're all going to. And I'm like. Uh, and then I get feedback from the listeners. They're like, you know, they're always like, thanks for the, thanks for all the information. They never say to me like, ah, oh, that'd be great if it was just a little bit shorter. And if we shorten them up, uh, they probably would be okay with that. But the the format works for me at night. It's 60 minutes. That's what I like to do. And if you want to drop at 30, you can do that. You're not going to miss that much by missing 30 minutes. But there's, it, there is some FOMO driven by some of our listeners who are like, well, but Jim, if it's there, I may miss it. <laughs> and you, you know, you, you may, there may be something there I need to know, but I don't have the time. And you know, you kind of got to go, well, I mean, like we can't, you can't do it. You can't make everybody happy. I guess that's what we're saying in this. You're not going to make everybody happy. So sometimes you, you do have to say no to some of those listeners and say, yeah, no, we're going to do it a little bit different. And uh, uh, sorry, there's other, I guess there's other podcasts out there if you want to do something different, but for you're never going to please everybody. And you're not always, everything that you think is super obvious is because you've been sitting in your own podcast for a while. I, um, I remember when I went from the musician cyber cooler to the musician's cooler and it even had a tagline where music, musicians come to trade advice and people still didn't know what the show was about. I was like, really? Really? Because to me, it was so obvious. And then when I changed it to the marketing musician, they went, oh, okay, that's what you're talking about. That makes sense. And By the way, oh, go, keep go ahead. I was going to say, speaking of Bernie, we were talking about Bernie a second ago. Yeah. My cat, I have this old cat, he's like 20, is doing what Bernie did. Yeah. Like <laughs> these incessant meowing around right. the house really loud right so you know it's it's good and bad <laughs> because we kind of know we kind of know it's coming with it but i love bernie too i mean I, bernie was uh yeah. i, I look forward to hearing bernie. If, you, that. if you need a bernie fix bernie the cat show.com is it still it, out there i think i'm not sure i think i moved bernie to captivate that's one of those shows that i use to because it's evergreen and I, I move it around and, and things of that nature. But uh, yeah, it's a great show. another thing when it comes to names is you have to be careful. I, I, we used to make fun. Well, we wouldn't make fun. That would be mean. We would, uh, we would chuckle amongst ourselves when we would see somebody like, if I change the name of the show 
to ask the podcast coach on fire, right? <laughs> trying to kind of ride the coattails of some other thing. And there was a discussion on Reddit where people were talking about be careful how you do that. Because what happens then is if you're kind of trying to, I don't know what the polite word is, but you're, you're, you're embracing somebody else's brand that you're probably going to get lost. Like people aren't going to find you because there's this whole other thing. And they were saying how, I guess the TV show, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. There are people that have tried to play in that. And the problem is when you Google, it's always sunny. The actual show comes up, not your show. Like the podcast is on page three because there's so much news about the actual show that they couldn't find the podcast. And so I get why they would want to do that. But it, they were kind of explaining how the the one podcaster, I guess, was trying to be cute and kind of play off the name. And in the process, it's like you got too close to the brand because the the actual brand just trounced you and uh, you didn't get any traction that way. So if you are uh, listening live, uh, you can always throw your questions in the chat room and ask the podcast coach dot com slash live like Kim did. Uh, she said, Dave, how was the meetup on Thursday in Cleveland? I did not go. Um, I, I, again, I realized that I was speaking this week and uh, or next week. And I was like, ah, but yeah, I wanted to go. There was a, there's a Northeast. Ohio, well, I do the Northeast Ohio podcasters meetup in there it was a Cleveland meetup. And the thing that, that kind of uh, threw me is I didn't notice that it starts at five. I, for some reason, I thought it started at six. It starts at five, which means I would have to leave here at four. And like, that didn't work. So she did that at askthepodcastcoach.com slash live. If you want to jump into the video, go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash join. And if you're listening on uh, Wisdom, uh, if you click the little plus sign under my name, uh, that will request uh, that you can come up and speak and I will approve you and uh, we'll, we'll get you going here. So, um you know, it's, well, we're, we're now in, see, you bring up cats, man. And it's like, think about it. If I, if you go on TikTok, you're not going to watch 10 videos without running into a cat video. At least I don't maybe because every time they come up, I watch, but, uh, that's, uh, we, we have a lot of cat discussion going on in the chat room. Uh, I took in a cat overseas while I was on active duty. Good for you. Couldn't, this is coach Dave. Couldn't figure out why that thing would meow so much. Turns out she wasn't fixed. Uh, it was a heat thing. Yeah, that does that. So, um, and uh, we do have a question from the chat room from Extreme Hip Hop News. Hey, Dave and Jim, my name is Ben. Um, my name is Ben. To save you trying to read out my channel name, okay, my question is, is it better to show your face when podcasting? I'm not overly confident. You don't have to. Um, if I was a female especially, I would think twice about doing video. And if people ask me why, I just go, guys are creepy. I was at an event last month, the Irma Bombeck writing workshop of about, I was probably one of 15 guys out of 400. And I just heard story after story about how guys are creepy. So that would be that. And if you're not, you know, um, if you're doing video, that would be a little weird uh, or different, maybe not weird, but um, Jack Reicher from the Dartnick Diaries had a guy that somehow, I think he was doing video, and he somehow, again, now Jack's show is all about hackers, was able to look at the background out of Jack's window and figure out where he worked or lived or something, and it was really, again, guys are creepy. Uh, so Jack now, if you notice, you can, obviously it's the internet, you can find pictures of Jack Reicher, but Jack goes by this cartoon of a guy in a hoodie now because he was like, yeah, that's a little crazy. So you don't have to show your, your face. Mm. Um, this is actually, uh, just a, con it's, it's a deep fake of old Peter Brady <laughs> and, um, I don't know, <laughs> Santa Claus. Uh, yeah. So, um, Jim, what, you what are your thoughts on that video and yeah, showing your face? I like it. I like to see people. Um, but is it required? Do you have to? No. If you're not comfortable with it, don't. You just go audio. It's okay. Yeah, I'm trying to I think mean, when I started be, doing video, you know? I you can, you, Yeah, you can be really creative on YouTube with just your audio. And, and, you know, I think uploading your audio to YouTube with a static image that is there the whole time. Uh, mixed results. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's free. Can. Yeah, you can. You yeah. can. 
if you want to. You can try it if you want to. And you never know with your audience, depending on who you're trying to reach, it may not matter, right? Do you have to show up? No. If you do, if you don't want to, I would say don't. If it makes you uncomfortable and you're just you're not as good that way, don't don't do it. Yeah, it took me a long time before I came on YouTube. So for the longest time I was just audio. And we did we did video quickly. Yeah. We went to video quick as soon as it was available. But there I've seen usually the the issue is English is not their first language, but I see a lot of software where there's nobody. And it's, I've even seen like the robot voice that is reading the ask the yep. podcast coach software will save you time and money. And you're like, okay, somebody doesn't speak English. That's fine. I you understand know, that. Pronounce is better than I do though. In some <laughs> cases, so <laughs> it's, it's not such a bad thing. I yeah. slur my words and stuff and those things aren't necessarily that bad. Yeah. Uh, DR says when it comes to the audience and asking your audience, they chose the wrong music for my podcast, but it was my fault for including choices that I really didn't want. That's a good point. Uh, I wanted a Creedence Clearwater sound and they chose James Taylor. Yeah. There's a big difference there. Kind of, um, <laughs> nothing wrong with James. I'm going to say, I love James Taylor as a guy like, all right, I need to calm down. And you know, <laughs> there is a young yeah. cowboy. Yeah. There you go. Um, and then, uh, she has a, she, she's going to patent this. It's a new TV idea. Uh, the masked podcaster. I did oh. that. I did once at, um, Joe Pardo tried it. And it was one of those where you kind of like the minute you start it, you go, Oh yeah, that doesn't make any sense. It was me, Rob Greenlee and some woman. Oh, uh, Tina, you know, Tina, good old Tina. Tina. Uh, yeah, (laughs) yeah, that's it. And we're at this event and we are hidden, but you know, and then somebody would ask a question kind of like the dating game was the idea. You couldn't see the podcaster. Well, hello. You know, everybody knew every time Tina talked because, you know, she didn't sound like Rob Greenlee, you know, so it was, uh, yeah. So the, the masked podcaster, a little easier to, uh, to figure out who's who or whatever. So, um, you know, but, uh, if you want to do it, do it. If you don't, don't go that route. Um, speaking of this, uh, of YouTube, uh, this is a question from Facebook that somebody asked, and it's one of those questions where you kind of go, mm, and I, I, I have a story, but it's um, how do monetized podcasts and videos get away with using short clips? We've all seen it. A popular podcast or YouTuber will use one to two seconds of a soundbite or a scene from a movie as a meme for a joke or to make a point. Uh, one I see a lot is many moments later, which is a clip from SpongeBob. Another podcast I listen to will use the occasional audio clip or dialogue from a movie or a TV show. It's not long, generally two seconds or less, but it's still recognizable, copyrighted, protected material. How are they getting away with that? And, I, well, number one, the the correct we're not a lawyer kind of uh, answer. Yeah, didn't even stay at a Holiday Inn and Express last night. Yeah, uh, is... I think what what I found, and I, I was going through some stuff, I actually found a topic that I could not find on the internet. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But in my research and all, um, I found an old clip I have of a comedian who used to do, she would dress up like Wednesday Adams, right? With the the pigtails and the whole thing. And like one was Wednesday, is it Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday Adams cat versus cat callers. It's on YouTube. At least it might still be. And so it was, this, you know, it's, you're taking Wednesday Adams and just putting her in like modern times and things like that. And it went viral because it was hilarious. And about, and she got up, she got on some like the Today Show or whatever it was, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. And the more popular it got, eventually got enough popular to where it made the desk of the people that own the Adams Family copyright. And they went, yeah, no. And that was the end of that. And so I, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I think part of it is as much as you go, oh, my God, they got 3,000 views on that. That's kind of a drop in the bucket compared to the millions of people that watch whatever it is you're doing. Because I see that all the time where people will go. You know, and and that's what I think about that. And then they'll show a quick second of the office and somebody doing a double take or something. And I'm like, it's it, when you think about the time and effort it would take to sue somebody who has no money 
I think is the other thing. And so the minute you start being successful and start to monetize it, I think in some cases where even though it's been illegal the whole time that they go, yeah, that's enough of that. I don't know. What do you think, Jim? Well, I think in most cases, right, they can't monetize it. So when you when they put the video up, it's going to say, hey, you've got copyrighted content in here. It, the rights owners are going to get whatever advertising is done against this. So you're, they're not going to allow you, YouTube's not going to allow you to monetize, monetize it from your perspective. I think oftentimes the right holders now are choosing to let those go in, in favor of them getting the monetization for it. And the YouTuber will get the will get the, the click-throughs right. to their channel, hoping people will subscribe to their channel. I think that's kind of the hope. I think we see a smaller amount, and again, I, I, I don't know for sure. I've never seen the numbers, but I, and I'm only guessing at this point. But I think we see the, the numbers of actual takedowns being less and, the, and, and those being allowed to pass through being more. And so I think YouTubers are taking a chance on it and saying, you know, and they'll put in their, you know, in their description, you know, I, I don't own the rights to any of this. There's some of those kind of shenanigans going on as well. But I think that they're taking a chance on it. So, I mean, I know from experience, we we did a podcast and the, the, the guy I was interviewing had in the background, so like on a screen, like right here, he had a, a Thursday night football game on from, mm. from, from the NFL, right, here in the United States. No sound, just a picture and just a partial picture. And we got flagged for that, right? Wow. And it was like, you can't, you're not going now, not going to be able to monetize this. You know, I take that video and I move it to my, to my real channel, not real, but to the edited channel. Right. Yeah. I have a live channel and then an edited channel. And, um, I couldn't, now I had to think, okay, I got to blur that out or cut those parts <laughs> out or do something along those lines. Cause I don't want that happening on my, on my own personal channel, right? I don't want those demonetization or where you, they, they don't allow you to monetize it. So Dave, I think that's how they're getting away with it. I think we've taken a standard on podcasting with audio that if you're including music clips, you're probably going to get caught. Something's going to come around. I think music is a little bit different than video right now. I mean, those are two different licensing and I don't know for this for sure, but I think they have different licensing rules associated with them. And, um, and so, you know, you're ro- either way you're rolling the dice, right? If you're, you're doing this, I, I know this for sure. If you take on YouTube, if you take somebody else's video and use it, they'll let that copyright holder know for sure yeah. that it's been used exactly where it's been used. So, you know, that's probably how, you could experiment with it. I've always been afraid to get, um, I'd always been afraid to get the copyright strikes, which yeah. seems to me the last couple times I did that, they said to me, this is not a copyright strike, but you're not going to be allowed to monetize this yourself. And any monetization we do is going to go to the copyright holder. So um, that's how I think they're getting away with it, right? Is there, is there putting those little clips in? Yeah, they're, they're probably not monetizing it. But many podcasters have other ways of monetizing their videos. They're not relying on the video itself, the ads in the video. In fact, I think some of them prefer the ads don't run in the videos. Yeah. That's because they've, they've got they've got affiliate or they're selling merch or they're tell you what, today I probably could have sold a few red cross shirts. That's it. The comments we've got in the chat. But um so I think that's how I think that's how they're getting away with it. Yeah. And and I think once you start making money that's when you catch the attention. And I guess as long as you're not um, like, I wouldn't mess with kiss. I wouldn't mess with Disney. I mean, there are people that really protect their brands. Uh, The Eagles are another one. The Eagles have a team that do nothing, but go around and take their music. They're a bunch of stars. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, all right, whatever. As a kid growing up listening to them, I had no idea how, I mean, the superstars that were going to, that were going to come out of that group. Right. Yeah. That's amazing. Crazy. Um, wow. Holy cow. It's 11 o'clock already, which means Jim, yeah. you're, you're probably thirsty again. Right? I am. Yeah. Fill, fill me up. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Absolutely. And of course, uh, at this point, we always like to thank our awesome supporters. If you'd like to be an awesome supporter, go over to ask the podcast coach.com slash awesome. And the, um, uh, awesome supporter, uh, the, the, from our, our, Woman in the tube from uh, Amazon. Uh, uh, what's her name? What's the oh, man in the tube? Right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a, true. It's a it's a British dude now. From us, the podcast coach dot com slash support. Looks like it's Felix. 
at latinpodcastawards.com. There you go. And uh, the cool thing about that is, Felix, when you become an awesome supporter, you get invited to a kind of a, a group roundtable that we do. Uh, and in this case, it was the Northeast Ohio podcasters. I sent out a thing. I'm like, hey, it's pretend you're from Ohio night. And uh, Felix showed up. He's a great guy. Uh, and uh, Ask the Podcast Coach runs on PodPage. If you'd like to try PodPage, it's simple. You can do it for free over at trypodpage.com. And if you just can't get enough Jim Cullison, well, then go check him out over at theaverageguy.tv and check out Home Gadget Geeks. If you're thinking of starting a podcast, now would be a good time to launch or start to plan the one. Actually, October would have been a great time to start planning the one you want to launch in January. But nonetheless, we can get you caught up because when you think podcasting, think School of Podcasting and come see me over at um, schoolofpodcasting.com. And uh, again, if you'd like to be an awesome supporter, go over to askthepodcastcoach.com slash support. And uh, we had a question from DR. She said, what are your thoughts on both Evo Terra and Tanner Campbell? Which is interesting because both those guys are, are, would be admittedly, right? I'm not throwing shade here. Admittedly contrarians. They like to be contrarians. Um, They've both pivoted. Now, Tanner, I'm not sure. It's some stoicism. Is that a thing? I think it is. Um, but he's, he did a podcast on stoicism, which I still don't know what it means, but it went pew, like it, it took off running as fast as like, holy cow, like, like tens of that, like five and, and almost six figure downloads. And he went and he's monetizing that. So I could stand over here and do podcast consulting and have people argue with me on Twitter. Now, again, he's a professional contrarian, so that's kind of comes with the, uh, the territory. And so all of a sudden something comes along and starts making a lot of money. Maybe I should start focusing on the thing that makes a lot of money. And I'm like, yeah, I get why he pivoted. Evo Tara is, um, he's pivoting from what I thought was fiction podcasts. I know, uh, Fred had thrown up something. He was doing something like true crime, um, but I think I forget his answer was it was getting too detailed for him to catch up on all the details, which I can definitely, uh, agree with that, um, to be a pundit. So he was kind of saying, look, if I don't know, I don't know enough to comment on this as much. I think if I summarize that, um, which is a bummer cause I, I, I liked Evo's point of view. It was different than mine. And, um, so, what do I think about it? Again, what it's, you know, I, I miss them both. Uh, I sent a thing to Tanner. I'm like, dude, you were my shower podcast. Like, I'm very dirty now. Like, <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> that part out. <laughs> <laughs> but he, for a while, he was doing a daily show and it was like nine minutes long. I'm like, that's a perfect yeah. shower podcast. And, yeah. um, yeah. And then he went to once a week and I got kind of stinky and now I'm very stinky. And yeah. So, um, and Evo went from doing a daily show to doing a weekly show to doing no show. So, um, I, I think he'll be back. Uh, they Evo, did what they had to do, right? They had what the, they did, what they had to do. This is, we talked about this at the beginning of the show. They've made the shift. Yeah. Things will change. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you're not having fun doing it, please stop doing your podcast, you know, maybe take a week off or two weeks or a month or whatever. Uh, and, and see how you feel about it. But, uh, I think so we were talking about this on Facebook, like, when do you quit? And I think Glenn said the thing about, you should quit after your best day ever. Cause that's when yeah. you know, that's, that's when you'll know. Uh, because when you quit, cause you're tired and burnt out and crispy, maybe just having a bad day. Um, I don't know. But although sometimes I've been tempted to quit and, you know, and I, and I push through and it gets better. Yeah. Like, you know, it, that's no guarantee either. You know, you, you, you just make a decision. You're going to, it's going to have consequences either way. But, but what I always tell people, you know, what helps you sleep at night, you know, if you're losing sleep over it or your health's not great because of it, or it's causing anxiety issues or whatever, well, do something different. Yeah. I mean, I get, I get nervous when I see where I think podcasting is going because I don't like it. 
You know, when I just see everybody going, I need ads, ads, more ads. And there, you know, there's a lot of technology right now that's going to transcribe your ad and then they're going to run it through another machine that's going to see how safe you are. And then we're going to give you a score and we're only going to advertise on your show if you get at least a seven. And I was like, yeah, no, like, ugh, does any, I, I will say it again, you like, it's not the best way to monetize your show. And then we have people stuffing in seven ads in a 90 minute show. Okay. That was me, but I was just testing, but <laughs> nonetheless, so I, I get nervous about that, but, um, you know, some people, I, I ran into a guy this week that, uh, I was watching a YouTube video of his and he quoted his listen note stats and I asked him on his YouTube channel, I'm like, hey, are, are you quoting a listen note stats? And he goes, yeah, it's a great database of information. And so I looked up his website, went over on his, you know, contact page and said, hey, just for the record, here's my my two YouTube videos that kind of explain how listen notes, you're comparing yourself to a show that died in, you know, 2003. I'm like, is it really like that's what you're going to crow about? And his answer was, I like it. I'm going to keep using it. And I was like, okay. And then I was like, okay, well, we can agree to disagree again. Doesn't mean you. And then he said, I'm going to be speaking at podcast on how to charge your guests. And I was like, all right, maybe I found my new Evo. Somebody who thinks differently than I do. And I sent him a link to a episode I did on that. And so, uh, you know, I was like, that's. Uh, By the way, I think you can charge your guests. If you if you're in a spot where you could do that, yeah, and it's working for you, and it's and people are paying. I mean, Dave, there's no there's no law that says you shouldn't do that, right? I mean, I know we felt from a from a long time standpoint, from a long term podcasting perspective, from the very beginning that somehow that's evil, but it it's supply and demand. I mean, if people if you have a great product and someone's willing to pay you whatever to be on it and, yeah. and they bring the value that your listeners are expecting and it works for you. Yeah. Why wouldn't you take, it's like, it's a, it's a giant ad. Yeah. Why, well, why wouldn't you just remember due to the FTC guidelines, you have to disclose oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, all that right stuff. No, right yeah. On. DR's right like disclaimer, disclaimer. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, right on. Right um, on. I mean, you, you can, you can, um, oh, although what, what if the guest comes on and they're not talking about the thing they're known for, they're still paying you for it. Do, yeah. You see, know, that's, like, I always just tell people, I'm like, there's a lot of ways that could go bad. So you better charge them a lot. So I don't know. Yeah. It's spooky. Oh, right on. Right on. Yeah. Coach Dave says, I believe that podcasters provide voice to important issues. Often bigger entities can't or won't uh, seek them. One of the things I want to do today is put out a version of the Akron podcast because there's something on the ballot that I voted for yesterday that I'm not sure everybody knows is on the ballot and we should all go vote for it. It's the whole thing about uh, police overseeing and blah, blah, blah. And, um, but uh, Coach A7, it's an offer to promote like messages in exchange for a dollar, an audience and a platform. That's what, uh, so if you have somebody that's trying, again, an important issue, things like that, uh, those bigger entities aren't going to seek those out. So it's, to me, I always just say it's a slippery slope. That's, that's my biggest worry. You know, you start getting. Yeah. And you can disclose it. Like yeah. this was, this is a paid advertising. This podcast was, is a paid advertisement, right? <laughs> And, you know, it, listen, it depends on your, hold on. It depends on your, the way you approach the podcast is to, is if they have, I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to make up things or, or they send it to you and you're not going to be honest about it and it's a bad product, that's on you. Yeah. That's your integrity, right? That's on the line. So, you know, you've got a, you know, I think if I had a, if I had a product say, Hey, I want to be on your podcast. And I might say to them at this point, okay, but I, I may say things I disagree with. Are you going to be okay with that? Right. I, this, this isn't just going to be, right. if you want to do a, if you want to, if you want me to do an, a commercial for you, that's, that's five times more what it would be for the yeah. podcast type, <laughs> type. Deal. And that's, I think maybe that's the difference between a podcast and a commercial, right? Is that in the commercial you're being paid to endorse this thing. Maybe if they're just being on the on the podcast, paying to be on it, maybe it's not a hundred percent endorsement, and you can say, "Yeah, but what about this?" or "Yeah, what about that?" type deal to them, and not not necessarily make it one long commercial. Yeah, Dr. has the disclosure ready. The following guest has paid me a boatload of money, a buttload of money, uh, to pretend to gush over their product and or service. Yeah, oh, I mean, for me, anytime I hear that on the radio, 
you know, the following is a paid promotion from, you know, yeah. Dave's House of Smelt. And you're like, that uh, means it's a commercial. Right? Yeah. That means what that means is you're going to get the sham wow guy. Yeah. I saw this boat in half, you know, type deal. Yeah. And, you know, th- that's a commercial. I think, you know, you could have a guest on, they pay for the appearance to be there. You can have an honest conversation about the product. And I think that can work. Yeah. You know, well, depending on your audience. Then you have stuff like this. Chris says there's a podcast called Podcast But Outside with two random comedians and they go on the street and interview random people and pay each guest a buck. I might have to check that out because it's such a random thing. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. but that's, it's, it's a definitely a format. I've seen some people that interview people, especially they'll go on a college campus and they'll ask like things like how many States are in the U S or what's, what's a country. And they'd be like, it's just, they just answer really in, in ways that prove that maybe they're not the smartest tool in the shed. Um, so that's always kind of tricky, but, uh, You'd have to, what that's going to do, and they say they pay them a buck, so that's not really, you know, it's a buck, I guess. But on the other hand, if you're doing a daily show and you're interviewing 10 people a day, that could add up. That could be uh, sticky. Um, Here's a question, kind of speaking about it's your show again. Once again, looking for the best software to record interviews, they say, for a guest who only has a phone. I've used a restream for a year and it was nice to have many live streams at once, but the issues with guests on a crappy setup, meaning they have a slow connection, no mic, just a phone are too frequent to ignore, which I guess, depending on your genre, that could be a case. If you're happen to interview kind of people, maybe on the back nine, um, I've tried talking to their support, but the only solution they offered was make them use a mic on a computer. See, that's an interesting thing right there. I've tried to, oh, talking to, meaning Riverside, I bet, support. I thought he meant talking to the guest support team. No, he's talking Riverside. I always think to myself, well, Zoom, Meet, and Skype do it. Why can't you? Um, Anyway, I really don't care about the many channels at once thing, so I'm considering going back to Zoom, which pretty much guarantees a constant connection no matter what. I will miss, however, the audio quality restream provides out of the box. Unless you guys know, he was doing this on a Facebook group um, of a software that will prioritize connection and audio quality recommendations are welcome. And I am kind of that guy that's like, make them use a computer or get a mic. Or, of course, in the again, the Dave Jackson drinking game, you know, I'm going to say it. The PodTrack P4, you know, can plug a phone into it. I would just, my guess is if this person only has a phone, they don't have a Skype account they don't have a Zoom account. They need to dial in. And that's that's my least favorite guest because they're going to sound like the phone. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Yeah. I mean, they, they could. I think the, the Zoom dial in is still a digital connection. So Interesting. once it gets there, I think it's still digital. I mean, off an iPhone, uh, even through Zoom, may, may not be bad. I've been yeah. surprised if they, this is where it's a good, this is where the pre-call is super important, yeah. right? Get them on the phone before the interview, get them on the phone, test a few things out, see what they do have. Say, Hey, do you got a pair of, you know, your phone came with some headphones? Maybe do you have those that may improve the sound right on it or where they place the phone as they're talking to you may make a difference or getting them in a quiet room. I'm, you know, I am constantly surprised at how many people try to do these podcasts and they're on the road. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, you, you couldn't have taken 30 minutes to, to pull over somewhere or to right you know, and you're like, so to me, what that kind of means, the guest is like, yeah, I'm pretty busy and I don't have enough time to really care. <laughs> I like, I said yes, but I don't really care about this because I don't care what my sound. Well, that's an, for me, that would be an indicator of like, yeah, let's just schedule this for never and <laughs> we'll, we'll be, <laughs> you know, so if they, if they don't care enough, like you to, to, to spend yeah. a little bit of time, you know, if they're now they're important, like if they're really, really to you, if they're really, really an important guest to get and they just, they just won't do it. And you're willing to spend a little bit of money, ship them some equipment, right? There's some pretty inexpensive ways to get that done. It's not free and it's not, it's a couple hundred bucks, Yeah, but it's, you know, ship them audio equipment, a headset, something. Well, I was going to say, I know you used to do that. You would ship people. We did. 
Yeah, we did. It was a, it was a huge, <laughs> gigantic pain. Like yeah. it just, it, it was, I, you know, I had two people in our mail room who tracked these things and some, some guests, you know, wouldn't send them back and they'd hold on to them for like three months and you'd be like, Hey, could you, we sent you a label. Yeah. <laughs> could you just put the label on it? And Oh yeah. Oh, that thing. Oh yeah. I'm too important for those kinds of things. Like I, I don't have time for you. And that, well, okay, you're never coming back. <laughs> Sorry. So if you're not, if, if it's not that important to you to just put a label on a box. Yeah. Well, like and that. I'm trying to think on an iPhone, is FaceTime part of Facebook or is that start, is that part yeah, of? FaceTime is an Apple. Yeah. So in theory, yeah. if you had an Apple phone, you could FaceTime together. Yeah. Yeah. That, the quality is pretty good. That would work. Listen, Facebook's messenger is, their video is yeah. pretty good. Like, I mean, that, that, that's a way to connect. You can, you can connect person to person and yeah, there's some trickery you got to do to get those things resolved. If zoom is your only option, you can do zoom recordings. If yeah. that's a, StreamYard is a great way to do it. Like you can on their phone, they can log into the browser and get pretty good. I did not know get, that. They can indeed. I, yeah. So, oh, that would work. That would be my answer then. But, yeah. but again, if they, yeah, because that's a browser based. They don't even have to install an app. I know when Rob Walsh was doing Podcast 411, he got to interview, and I just had his name and it ran out of my head. Um, he was the producer of Michael Jackson's um, mm-hmm, Quincy Jones. He got to interview Quincy Jones because Quincy Jones, I think, had a podcast at the time. And they had one option you will call Quincy at this number. That was it. And he's like, well, when it's Quincy Jones, I'm calling that number. You know, it's like you do what you can. And um, I know uh, Captain Fred was mentioning Skype and Skype out. Yep. I used to do that for people who didn't have a number. I just, for me, if I'm, whoever I'm talking to is a, either a podcaster or an author or anybody that's in the public that wants more publicity, you need to go buy a microphone. Like it's just, you know, Samson Q2, you go to town. It'll be fun. Um, and the coach is saying, uh, Coach Dave, doesn't StreamYard require Chrome? I guess if you had Chrome on your phone, I've never tried that. And I've heard mixed results about the Riverside thing where they have an app. Um, so that will be, be interesting. It requires Chrome on the PC. I think on the, on the, uh, on the phone OSs, it has some degraded uh, features. Not all, not all features are available. Um, I forgot to write down her name. But this was in Facebook this morning. Um, if it, I guess if it matters, how do you drive audience to your older episode? Is it just me or does anyone else feel that getting listeners for old episodes, so episodes that are more than, say, two weeks old, is kind of tough? I've never seen older episodes getting traction beyond the first week. Since the most, since most podcasts contain timeless insights, I'm just worried about no one discovering those insights. Um, and so that's her question was, how do you get people to your old episodes? And for me, I guess, I just, you try to mention them when you can. Harry Durand does a great job of this. At the very beginning, he'll be like, like this week, you know, it's episode 413 of Ask the Podcast Coach. He'll be like, hey, welcome to the show. If you missed it last week, I had a great conversation with so-and-so. You can find it at askthepodcastcoach.com slash 412. So he always promotes his last episode. Then he does his current episode. And then he does a great job of, hey, next week I'm going to be talking with so-and-so. So he's he's got his setup so that he knows the past, the present, and he's talking in the in the future. So that does that. And then anytime I ever kind of redo a topic, so if I'm like, like I looked last week, my, my next episode is going to be about words. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before. And when I did, I couldn't really find it. So I'm not going to link back to that episode because the episode I thought I did, apparently I, I never did. So Jim, do you do anything to kind of promote your old stuff? Um, yeah, we go back uh, and pull out snippets and they they post. We haven't done this in, in a while, but during the pandemic, we did kind of video snippets of older stuff. Um, we're constantly in the in the groups, you know, as people ask questions, we go back. I've put like on uh, Podchaser, you can create lists. And so I've gone to create kind of helpful lists. And so when people, we get people who ask the same questions all the time, like, how do I do this? And I'm like, okay, it's only been asked like 8,000 times. So we, I have a playlist ready for them and I just bring it in um, uh, that way. 
But we, we found during the pandemic, we found really good, you know, using clips on Instagram uh, was successful. We did some clips to LinkedIn um, that way. It takes a lot of time. <laughs> you know, you got to have somebody go in there and listen, cut it out, make yeah. wrap it, make all that other stuff. So it's a great way to do it. It just takes a lot of time. I, although I've created enough stuff, Dave, I could probably never podcast again. Just reuse all the stuff that I created. I'd be just fine. Yeah. I'd be just fine. Coach Dave says his sponsors promoting their old episodes. So that's one yeah. way. Um, and then it's evergreen. Why not? Yeah. Why not? D- and this is a great suggestion. Um, go back and change your titles because you didn't know that titles were important in the back. And you go back and you, I had one where I forget what the actual podcast part was about, but it was, it was after Christmas and both my nieces had gotten actual Polaroid cameras. And I somehow made the headline about that, like everything old is new again or something like that. But I looked back and I was like, that has nothing to do with what I actually talked about. And I somehow tied that story into podcasting, but I went back and said, yeah, what, uh, let's, let's, let's change that title to something a little more descriptive of the actual topic. So you can go back and do that and add keywords and that whole nine yards and, See if you can get uh, good old Google to uh, to come along and do that. I I think I Google. Yeah, I think I broke Google. I really thought I found one instance where adding one word really changed the sentence, and I was like, you know what? I bet this is on the internet. I bet I can go out and and Google. You know, changing one word made a difference, or uh, a better way to say it would be, or blah blah blah. And I am here to tell you, I came up kind of empty because almost all of it was about power words and marketing. Like, you know, use these words. These are, you know, this will get people to click and which I get, I understand, but I could not find the magic phrase that I thought that somewhere, you know, and Theodore Roosevelt was going to say this, but instead he said this, and that's why this bill passed, or just some example of like, here's a better way to say it that would engage your audience more. And I could not find either anything out of marketing or how to change a word in a word document, like how to use find and replace. I found that a lot. And so it was interesting because I, I, I found some stuff, but not really where I wanted to to go. So it was always interesting. I was like, I mean, I spent, I'm going to say six hours searching Google and I know how to use Google. I know, you know, quotation marks and the advanced search features. I was really surprised. It was just every time I was like, and then you start seeing that the links that are coming up on the front page are purple because you've already gone there and went, yeah, not really what I'm looking for. I was kind of like, huh? Cause I think words make a, obviously they make a difference. And then I was trying to find if I had more time, I'd go find the clip of Seinfeld where he talks about like this word is funnier than this word and that whole nine yards. There was one on that, but uh, it was, uh, I was surprised that, that uncle Google really did not bring me what I was looking for. Well, in this, in this world of, of marketing and SEO, I think those gurus, the marketing SEO folks, I think if they, they, I think they feel like, if they just say enough words long enough, we'll just agree with them and then say, we don't really know what you're talking about. Or we'll just pay you to do it. Like mm. it, it is so confusing and so complicated. And you'll be like, well, yeah, yeah. I thought I was supposed to use these keywords. Oh no, 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 no. That was last week. Like yeah. this week, because I'm smarter than you, you need to use these words. And you're like, Oh, okay. I'll use these words. Oh no, no. That was, that was an hour ago. Now you need to pay me to use these, you know, like to use these words. Yeah, and so if I if I feel like we're all hamsters on the wheel trying to figure out this SEO stuff, you know, just recently Google says, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna figure out a way to really play down these these AI created things because we know they're not real." Well, I mean, there's a whole there's a whole industry built around this. By the way, that was like built in like three months. Yeah, uh, there's there's a whole AI industry around this, and um, and then you're like, okay, what am I what am I supposed to do? And then you listen to one SEO person and like, oh no, you definitely need to do this. And then the other one's like, that that person doesn't know what they're talking about. Right. It's definitely you definitely have to do this. You're like, who do I listen to? Yeah, 
you know, who, who, who do I, and I've done, I made some of the changes people recommend, Yeah, you know, nothing. You're like, okay, that didn't, that doesn't do anything to me. So I think the world of, of, I'm going to add content creation to this because we have a whole new ways of doing content creation with Jasper and some of those other things. And then um, this world of SEO and, and titling and what you put keywords and power words. And it's a, I, I, yeah. who's right. Yeah. Who is right in this? And that's where eventually you just have to, like you did. All right. I'm going to try this, see yeah. what happens. And if you know, it doesn't make the needle go up, all right, well, then I'm going to try this other thing. And you just keep trying and you do your best to avoid things. But, uh, you know, as we uh, wrap up, I wanted to hit Craig's question here. Do you ever repeat the content of old podcasts that have high download numbers while improving the content, image, description, show notes, and title? Yes. You you could just go back and update the old one. But I've yeah. done, I, I think the last time I talked about interviews, it was the ultimate guide to doing and creating interviews. And it was like an hour and 20 minutes. It was everything I ever knew about being interviewed and doing interviews. And I talked about it before. And that's why that, that episode was so long as I was like, I want to do an episode that just like, if anybody ever asked me about interviews, I can just go here, go, go listen to this and uh, you'll be fine. So um, as we do have a, a, we have to leave early today. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and start wrapping it up. So uh, Jim, did you do an, uh, an episode this week? Yeah, yeah, we got back. We're back on track. Marv B., we know him as Uncle Marv in the chat room here, yeah. uh, was on. We spent a little time talking about uh, it was Cybersecurity Month back in October, and there's actually some good advice, I think, for podcasters in there. If you want to go back, things ransomware and some of that kind of stuff to kind of think about your backups and such. And then uh, a little bit of great content with Uncle Marv. You can check it out. It's already posted, homegadgetgeeks.com. Nice. And as I mentioned, this, this episode, you're like, wait, you're going to do an episode and you just said you couldn't find any content. Well, I couldn't find the content that I thought I was going to find, but I did find some stuff and some good things. And so, and part of this was based on the conversation we had with Mark from podcastbranding.co and his whole thing about how he changed his, his verbiage. So I actually interviewed Mark rather than use the, the, uh, audio we had from when he called into the show so that's going to be part of it we've got a little insights there about uh from one adam curry i believe will be on the show and uh, a couple other things so i was just doing that and i did look up last night because i was like man if i can't find what i'm looking for what i'm going to do and that's when i was like well i do have all this stuff but i went but i have a ton of folders um i have a folder called uh future ideas and i went in there that's where i found the wednesday adam uh, thing I was like I never talked about that on how you know be careful when you're making yourself cute and tying yourself to another brand and so uh, I might pull some of those out that way I'm not going well no it's Thursday I thought I'd give you a show because that's always a pretty good uh, clue that I'm going to waste 20 minutes of your time so uh, but uh, thanks to everybody I will we will be here next week I come back Friday so we'll be here Saturday I'll be a little jet lagged, but uh, we'll be here for another version of Ask the Podcast Coach. Thanks to everybody. Thanks to Dan from Based on a True Story Podcast.com and Mark from PodcastBranding.co. We'll see you next week. 